Hello and welcome to another video here on AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton and we're with Philips today to look at their TV range for 2020. <laughs> in the Hilton Hotel at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam every January, the event started with a plenary presentation where the company highlighted its message for 2020. Chief amongst this was Ambulite, which has been a unique selling point for Philips for many years now, and it's great to see the company finally realising this point and pushing it forward in 2020. Bias lighting is a scientifically proven technique to improve eye fatigue when watching TVs in the evening or in dim rooms by having a fixed white light behind the TV at around D65 white point. And the Philips TVs do this in the ISF mode. You can however obviously go way over the top and have the lighting on the TV and hue bulbs follow the video on screen to produce completely distracting light shows following the action on screen like in this demonstration. While it's not something we would personally do here at AV Forums, it did distract us from the Phantom Menace showing on Disney+. Plus. Philips TVs in 2020 will feature the Disney Plus app which goes live late March in the UK. The TVs that were announced and of interest to AV Forum's members were the OLED 805, 855 and 865 TVs, with the only real difference between the panels being the stands they use, with the 865 adding a swivel stand and a design difference between the 805 and 855 stands. The new OLED models also add the 4th generation P5 picture processor with AI, which uses neural networks and machine learning to analyse millions of PQ test clips from a unique database created in-house over the last 30 years. The 4th generation P5 AI software analyses the content and categorises it as landscape nature, skin tone, sports motion, black contrast or animation and then applies a balance between the source, colour, contrast, motion and sharpness, which is Philips' five pillars of picture quality, to create the most natural and realistic image, according to the company. Once again, Philips is offering both Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus dynamic HDR playback, along with HLG and HDR10. The smart TV system is Android Pie and it should offer a fast and reliable performance with most of the major apps available in 4K HDR. Another nice touch for TV in 2020 is the introduction of the 9235 and 9435 LED LCD TVs with the sound system from the OLED Plus 934 by Bowers & Wilkins making its way to these TVs and adapted for the two screen sizes. The demonstration of the audio was excellent. Philips is also relaunching their Fidelio line of audio products with the X3 headphones being the highlight of this event with more to come later in the year. And it wouldn't be a Philips event without picture quality guru Danny Tak running his famous workshop with demonstrations and comparisons to highlight the new AI technology incorporated into the fourth generation P5 chip. So instead of me standing in front of the camera telling you all about it, we sat down with Danny to get the details directly from the person responsible for developing the P5 engine. So it's my pleasure again to be joined by Danny Tak, Philips Picture Guru, uh, the man behind P5 Picture Processing. It's now in its fourth generation. Um, you haven't rested on your laurels, you've gone ahead and you've improved it again. Yes, we did. Uh, so we've uh, added now uh, artificial intelligence in there, which is based on neural networks. So what we have done is over the last year, we have been training a neural network system offline in uh, Ghent with a database of millions of pictures and uh, we're learning the system how to put that into different uh, groups uh, such as uh, nature, face, motion or uh, uh, any other stuff uh, like dark, also dark, so the four categories and then if we don't know we're putting it like in other. Uh, with those four categories we are actually then doing a PQ recipe on top of it, which is going to improve again, make the sharpness more refined, contrast, color, everything more refined, more real. So it's not now our ambition to make the vivid even more vivid, more sharpness, more color, but more real. 
That is what we're going to use uh, artificial intelligence uh, for. And artificial intelligence is working in perfect uh, harmony with uh, our third generation P5. Together, this new neural network stuff on top of the P5 third generation is now actually our fourth generation P5 with AI. And I guess for those that are, are maybe not up to speed with what P5 actually does, you're not just talking about adding artificial sharpening to an object, you're looking at that object and how that object should look. So you're not just you know, putting sharpness on the lines and, and adding false contouring and, and so on. We have many possibilities of sharpening up and we're then therefore, because we have many things which we do a little bit of, we keep that increase of sharpness in a balanced way. Same happens for contrast and colors. And then sharpness, color, and contrast, we do in a very balanced way. So it's not our ambition to pull one string, uh, for instance, the sharpness string, and let the uh, contrast and color behind. That would make your picture out of balance. We try to keep it even and vivid in a perfect harmony with each other. Now, uh, there's two new TVs behind you. We'll cut away to a shot of those uh, doing a demo. So there's the, uh, the 805 and the 855 coming um, now. So what level is that screen at and what technology will it have on board? Well, there's one uh, range more. There is also 865. So there are three ranges, 805, 855, 865, coming both in 55 inch and 65 inch, and both uh, with uh, all, all three uh, ranges with uh, P5 uh, with artificial intelligence. And of course you also have Dolby Vision on there, HDR10 plus, so you have a full suite of technology. All the, all the features that were uh, already in the product, building further, only added the AI part in there now, so the rest is still uh, there as in our third generation P5. Um, hot potato at the moment is HDMI 2.1, um, so obviously we've had a lot of TVs announced at CES, you've had your launch event here in Amsterdam this week. Um, your TVs don't have full 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1, why is that? Uh, well, we don't see really the need of going so fast to HDMI 2.1 because the main benefit of that would be a variable refresh rate. Uh, which is now, there's only one source uh, where you could benefit uh, from, and that is the Xbox. Uh, so very limited uh, use cases to support that. Uh, we hear there's going to be uh, like more launches at the end of the year, might also be next year, and we're going to be ready for that. So you'll be ready for when the product's available, you'll have product uh, available that can take the signal. When the sources will be available, the product sources, we will be, uh, have the feature inside our TVs. Two uh, big news points that came out of CES was uh, Filmmaker Mode and uh, Dolby Vision IQ. Uh, so let's go to Dolby Vision IQ. Will you have that in your new TVs? Not in 2020. Uh, that's planned for later. Uh, also, again, there, less need to go fast there because Dolby Vision IQ is primarily two things. It's uh, coupling Dolby Vision with light sensor. Actually, today already, what we do in our Dolby Vision Bright Mode. We have light sensor active there, so we have already very similar to what is now offered by other brands doing Dolby Vision IQ, we already have. Second part of Dolby Vision uh, IQ is they provide also now a uh, um, uh, more uh, picture processing uh, on, you know, on both Dolby Vision sources and on non-Dolby Vision sources. As you know, on no, non-Dolby Vision sources, we have our great B5 engine uh, working on a full five pillars. And on Dolby Vision Bright, we also aligned uh, last year already with Dolby Vision to do uh, a few of our uh, uh, B5 uh, pillars. So we are already more or less without having the batch there doing a Dolby Vision IQ. Uh, the other big point was uh, filmmaker mode. Um, I have a funny suspicion that you maybe don't agree with filmmaker mode and the reason why I think that might be the case Danny is because you develop all these technologies where you're advancing picture processing and, and colour and all the rest of it yet filmmaker mode will switch all of that off. Well it's not my favourite mode 
there you're completely right. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we will follow filmmaker mode. Uh, we were in the announcement, the press release uh, uh, in CS, although we were not physically present there, but you were announced as one of the uh, many brands supporting filmmaker mode. Because I also don't see really a, a contradiction to what we're doing today. Today we have, in our smart picture modes, we have the uh, movie mode. Filmmaker mode is very similar to, uh, to movie mode, so we support movie mode. We will support also filmmaker mode. Um, but still, we will, of course, uh, recommend people to watch uh, TV any source uh, with, uh, with P5 uh, processing. But we leave the choice to the consumer, so we will uh, do filmmaker mode and uh, the consumer will be able to choose. It is quite a stark demonstration you do here, and I'll cut to the the footage from that earlier on today. So you had uh, cinema mode on one of the TVs, and your vivid mode on on the other TV, and there is a real stark difference there. Um, but, but what is your opinion? Because if the filmmaker is making it a certain way, and he wants the colour to look a certain way to give a, a, an emotion to a scene, is your vivid mode destroying that intent? Maybe it, it twists it a little bit, uh, but then again, uh, if you, for instance, let me give you a totally different example. Uh, not in color, but uh, every movie now, uh, which is uh, uh, played back in uh, full HD mode, we, in all our 4K TVs, have to upscale it to 4K resolution. So whatever the director intended in terms of sharpness, we're also, we are forced to do something there. We are forced to change it. So there might be slight nuances, but as I mentioned already before, our intention with, of our vivid mode is to keep it in, in balance uh, with each other, color, contrast, and sharpness. And we're not deviating then in that respect too much from the director intent. And I've got to say, from a purist point of view, which would be my point of view, I've got nothing against P5. I think it is an absolutely brilliant picture processing engine, and the work that you do is is incredible with some of the stuff that you do there. And you give us a demonstration today. It's not on the new models, but it's something for the future. And it's a, it's kind of like a smooth gradation feature that you're doing, taking out the gradients and, and banding that's in content. So maybe you could explain that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, we know that not all content is great, uh, especially stuff coming from YouTube, nothing against YouTube. There's also beautiful high resolution stuff there, but uh, generally uh, everybody throws on clips in low quality and then you have very much uh, a lot of banding because of the low resolution. Um, our source perfection today already NP5 is dealing to a certain level with that. Uh, and what I mean with a certain level, to deal with completely with the banding, it might affect a bit also the sharpness of the total picture. We're now working on new, uh, on new uh, levels of uh, source perfection, which is both solving the banding problem completely without affecting uh, at all the sharpness. And uh, another uh, new bit of technology you were showing us uh, is to prevent image retention, image burning, where uh, you're watching a news channel or a shopping channel that has graphics that are on the screen. Um, so your new tech, it, it understands that something's there and then dims the screen to try and stop image retention. Yes, uh, because, well, first of all, burn-in is, a, is a, a big buzzword in the market. If uh, a normal user at home watches uh, normal TV, which uh, what I, and what I mean with that is not all day the same channel, uh, and does also uh, uh, use his TV a normal behavior, meaning like you recommend him to put it in standby in the evening so that the clear residual image uh, processing can work, cleaning, uh, removing burn-in, uh, which could have happened during the day, uh, remove that during night. Um, we don't think the consumer is facing a big problem. But we do know uh, there are exceptions, and also uh, our competitors not doing all that are putting it as a very big problem. Uh, the other thing is moving up to bigger screens. Uh, 
uh, if it happens, it's a, it's a nightmare, it's, it's a real problem. Because then you have to go for a new, a new display and it will cost you a lot of money. We have now clever, clever processing which can very accurately detect uh, the logo uh, and then reduces the intensity to the right level without harming the rest of the picture, just the logo. Uh, and in that respect, avoiding the burn in without affecting the picture quality. Are you at a point now with OLED where you could guarantee the consumer that if they ever encountered image retention, you know, you would take care of that? Um, well, we have learned working out this feature in Ghent and destroyed many OLED TVs uh, because we didn't get it to the right level. We think now where we know how far we have to reduce intensity and logos to avoid burn-in, and I would say we're close to 95% solving this burn-in issue. Excellent. So, um, Vivid Mode. Our members at the recent event, uh, they really liked the tech, but they wanted you to change the name. Have you given that any consideration since then? Yes, of course. It's in, in, this, in the TV now. I mean, it's in the TV now. We left the Vivid Mode in also, but on top of that, we've added the a AI mode, which is basically the vivid mode with that AI flavor now. So it is renamed because that is now our default mode. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to getting the TVs in for review and putting them through the paces. And uh, congratulations as well. I don't think I've spoken to you since the uh, Editor's Choice Awards. I've noticed them dotted around here uh, today. Congratulations on that. Thanks very much, Danny. Thank you for that recognition. Uh, we're very proud uh, that we got this uh, for our P5 processor. Thank you. And that wraps up our coverage from Amsterdam and the Philips TV event. If you have any comments, then please do leave them below in the uh, comment section, either on AV Forums or on YouTube. And we'll see you again in the next video.